Hey gang, today we are in Arizona and we are in the White Mountains east of Phoenix. The White Mountains are where the Apache Reservation is, the White Mountain Apache. And this whole place is very dramatic, rock cut canyons, gorges, beautiful. It has special meaning for me personally here. It was back in 2018, May 6th on a Sunday where I almost lost my life right here within miles, Mount Baldy, that area as we go towards Sholo. I was flying my World War II TBM torpedo bomber, TBM Avenger, with my crewmate friend, and we were flying it back to Chicago, heading to Albuquerque, and it is here, right here, where we, the airplane went down, parachuted at very low altitude in these cliffs and mountains and we barely made it out alive. Plane was just found last year. It's shredded. That'll be another story. We're not here to talk about that today. We're actually here to talk about two beautiful young teens that were soulmates that, well, one of them died here. We're at the edge of a turn, almost a hairpin turn. There are a few of those and it goes straight down like about 500 feet here and let's take a walk i'm going to show you what happened it's just frightening and give you a look around at this beautiful scenery now we're on route 60 and what i'm showing you here is eastbound climbing up a pretty steep grade and i want you to imagine that you have a car coming down that coming down this road right here and it's winter it's Christmas Eve and they're 2013 they're coming down and there's got to be a lot of ice here there's got to be a lot of snow they were coming back from a snowboarding trip over there near Mount Baldy I forget the name of it but they're coming down heading home for Christmas Matthew Teschner and Kimberly Montoya, again, both 19 years old, soulmates, had a great time. And I want you to just imagine they are coming down this hill. I'm sure with that snow and ice and you can see basically here the road just turns to the right pretty dramatically and we're here. I don't know if this wall was here at the time. I don't think it maybe would have mattered. They probably would have went over it but you can see there's a monument here for them because their car went right off this cliff, right off this edge. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. It is absolutely dramatic and frightening and it is straight down. That is probably a 60 degree to a 70 degree incline of rocks and boulders. And I want you to just imagine, it's hard to imagine a car going off this precipice and I'm sure just cartwheeling and spinning down. There appears to be a beautiful river down there. I don't know what river that is. Yes. They were soulmates. Kimberly and Matthew, she survived. Matthew did not. I don't know how she survived, but she survived. She was pretty broken up. She was 
taken to the hospital from here. I think they may have gotten a helicopter in. I don't know, but you're not going to find much on the internet. This is not really a published story. You won't see it on YouTube, that's for sure, but here is the memorial to Matthew. They called him Matt. Handsome young guy. And when I tell you about him, you're, you're just going to be amazed because he was not only a handsome guy, a loving guy. I mean, these were soulmates, but they... He, he did so many things for people. He was a giver. He was on a path, uh, an amazing path. It looks to be there's some other people that have lost their lives here. We're going to take a quick look. I noticed on driving up that I see a, looks like a snowmobiling helmet. I don't think that's a motorcycle helmet. That looks like a snowmobiling helmet. You guys tell me, and of course, I'm not going to walk down there. Yeah, maybe that is a motorcycle. And there are the boots. And I see two cylinders, right? Wow. I wonder who that is. And then we have another cross here. What a beautiful lookout, but just dramatic. You have to be here to really appreciate the scene. Look at that way up there. There's a it's like a hole in the cliff. Cave. Well, let's back. Let's walk back towards my truck. There was another marker here I wanted to look at that predates Matthew and Kimberly's accident. Yeah, Kimberly. Her legs, as I recall, were pretty mangled. I, I don't know how you survive this. I really don't. This, I guess, is called Becker Butte Lookout. Dedicated to the memory of Gustav Becker, 1856 to 1940. So pioneer, merchant trailblazer, road builder, so he was the father of this US 60. Gosh, I don't know how you even build this road. And this is his son. No, wait, so 1856, yeah, 1886, that would be his son. It's really hard to describe. Look at that, just beautiful. All right, well, I'm going to head out of here and we're gonna to head to Tucson right now and we're going to go to Matthew's grave and pay respects, I'll tell you a little bit more about him. All right, gang, we made it down to Tucson, and we're at Holy Hope Cemetery here in Tucson. And I did find Matthew's grave. It's right over there, we're gonna take a walk. He grew up here in Tucson, and he went to Mountain View High School here. And I just wanna tell you a little bit about what I know about him, just from reading from what his family had written, 
and he was uh, quite a remarkable young man. He was, like I said, went to high school here, and he was at the time, the time of this accident, was attending Pima Community College, PCC. And like I said, he was a hardworking guy, very friendly. Everybody loved him, knew him, who knew him. His goals were to complete his fourth semester at PCC and then transfer to University of Arizona where he could complete his undergraduate degree. He was working on physical therapy schools here in Arizona. He was actually working at some schools, inspired by his grandfather, his aunt and uncle, who were all physical therapists. Now, Matt, as he was called, was an exceptional, bright, smart, energetic, enthusiastic, ambitious guy, determined, goal-oriented, and he had been working since he was 16 years old. He was working at Fry's Grocery Store. There's a lot of Fry's Grocery Stores around here. And when he turned 17, he went to work as a transporter at the University of Arizona College of Medicine. His co-worker said he would often go above and beyond with his transporter duties in order to ensure that the patients were comfortable. And he would also assist his fellow co-workers with what they had to do. He was always jumping in selfless, driven to serve others. And it was on August, in August of 2013, when he started a new job, very exciting, endoscopy lab. He was really into it and pumped. He was on call. He was having you to respond in time of need. And one of the co-workers in no time at all. The, the quote that he gave was very compelling. He said that Matt was a 35-year-old man in a 19-year-old body. He took his responsibilities for a man that was much older, much more mature. He had a lot of friends. His friends were inspired by him. He set a great example. And of course, as you could probably figure out, he loved the outdoors in addition to snowboarding. There was jet skiing and wakeboarding, water skiing, hunting, fishing, hiking, camping, traveling, motor homing with his family and friends. Just imagine, imagine the amazing memories. He also took pride in his health, spending time weightlifting and working out. He stayed in shape. He was not a, not very, uh, he was not a spender, but he was not a cheapskate either. He was a saver, but he would spend his money frivolously on his sweetheart, Kimberly, not just his girlfriend, she was his whole life. For the past two and a half years, they spent every single day of their lives together, living, studying. They would travel everywhere on adventures from the mountains to the cruises to Disney World, places like that. And of course, the common love of snowboarding. Now, some words directly quoted from his family. Matt's family said, we will Always remember Matt's unique expressions of joy, happiness, and excitement in his face and his eyes when he experienced things for the first time. Memories, precious, and they will always be treasured. We will never forget him. And are comforted knowing that he is in the Lord's presence.
They say uh, it broke our hearts to lose you, but you did not go alone, for a part of us went with you the day God welcomed you home. And they go on to say, we will see you again, Matt, on Resurrection Day. Although short, we are so happy that God had blessed us with his life, love, compassion for caring and doing for others. And they close everything they say. They basically close by saying, we will love you and miss you but always feel you in our hearts. Your loving family. And that's the story, guys. What happened on December 24th, 2013. It was fate. It was fate and very sad story. I have to report all our stories are so sad. But I'm gonna hit you with a bombshell here, guys. It's, I'm gonna hit you with the bombshell right here. The story's not over because Kimberly, three years later, five days after the anniversary of this accident, after she recovered and everything, she died. I don't know how she died. We searched and I gotta give Cheryl D a lot of credit and Deb we searched and searched, and by the way, Cheryl suggested this story and helped me find the grave locations before I came out here, but I'm afraid to say, I think I probably know what happened, you, and you, I'm not gonna say it, but I would like to know, but I'm, I'm really guessing, sadly, I'm guessing we know what probably happened. Kimberly is buried right next door here at the Evergreen Cemetery. We've been there before, right across these walls here. And we are gonna go there now and I'll, we'll visit her grave and I'll tell you more about Kimberly Montoya. We are at Evergreen, right next door, and we're going to visit Kimberly's grave, which is right over here. And I gotta tell you, she was an inspiration. She recovered miraculously to all of this, and she was very involved in a lot of programs, and of course she was devastated to lose her soulmate. And I don't think she ever fully recovered, but she really put on a great comeback. She made an amazing comeback, considering everything she'd been through. And like I said, the, the Instagram posts you can see online, there's the obituary, I'll put the link in, the Instagram posts, the programs. There's a lot of things, too many to discuss. I want to focus on more what, a little bit more about what she was all about and her. So let's walk to her grave. It's right over here and pay our respects to Kimberly Danielle Montoya. I guess I'm kind of surprised there's no flowers here or Nothing. So, but it's a beautiful picture of her. So, I guess the first thing I'll do as I do is you've seen these devices removable and screw them in 
and I brought my lonely, my lonely rose. I kind of figured there would just be a lot of flowers here that I would be adding to. But she's got a flower now. I do know she's not forgotten. There's a lot about her on the internet. And I'll just say that it was written that she was an inspiration to many after overcoming many challenges she faced after her tragic accident. And when this was written two years after, she tried to make the most of her situation returning to the University of Arizona and continuing on life's journey with her head held high. She wore her many scars as badges of strength and courage and was looking forward to a new year full of newly found zest and inner peace. Her faith and trust in God were her strength when she was having a rough time, and she was having a rough time. Kimberly left her mark everywhere she went, for she had friends in many places, and she will be deeply missed by all. I will leave the link on Kimberly's story, and I hope we can find out what happened. So. That's the story, and just devastating. Rest in peace, Kimberly, and you are reunited with your soulmate, Matthew.